先进汤机、送机机、公共拖把机，这些设备呢，它它它没去年半年，肯定是真够的。嗯，那我们不去。嗯 ，says first of all, before you start listening to the talk now, don't forget to give rise to the motivation of bodhicitta in your heart, which is the idea that for the benefit of all sentient beings, which actually need your help, then. You decide to reach full enlightenment, and to for this purpose again, the yes, information of Dharma is needed, and you're going to listen to it now. Every day, he says, he tries to, re, to he requests us to do this, and so please don't forget. <laughs> Also, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we come, after having explained about the appearance of body, the next verse deals with speech. Speech means then when we talk about the threefold division of our activity, body, activity, speech and mind, and then out of those three, then it's the speech. The speech we meet everywhere and um, sometimes it's a very pleasing uh, um, to, he to, hear, to listen to this speech. Some people come up to us and say, oh, you're so fantastic, you're really good and I, uh, you're so famous and what you did, this is so fantastic. And this, uh, all this we know is just empty words, it's just empty sound, nothing behind. However, we really feel there's so much benefit for our heart, it really warms us up. And, but all this is just the cause of confusion, it's just the a delusive appearance and just entangles us in confusion. But so at other times we we meet sounds that uh, are like um, sounds of disapproval, where um, people s come up to us and say, "Well, you don't, you don't really seem to know what you're doing there, or um, you haven't probably studied that, and um, you definitely need some more patience here. You're not a very generous person, are you?" And uh, so this kind of in words, then we hear that, and people pointing out our defects, then we really, it really makes us upset. So we are almost uh, uh, are in tears when we hear that. Then, <laughs> Dratangdrasinata Okay, 
So now then the, the various um, sounds that we hear, the pleasing ones and the critical ones, they give rise to various thoughts in our mind or heart. So maybe either there are very nice, very pleasant thoughts that come by, by the sound of praise or there by the sound of critical words we have very unpleasant pictures and thoughts coming up in our mind. The sound, in fact, doesn't do any harm at all to us. The sound just reaches our ear, so what? We neither it is infectious, the body doesn't get sick by it, nor we have, have headache by the sound, by the mere sound. But it is the, the mass of thoughts and ideas that we develop based on that sound, and those they really make us feel very uncomfortable. I don't know if you have a Then, Ceylan, Sencha, Mejang, Tom here, Tom to Jahi, and the Tread on Dong, as over the Mare, Sencha, Mejang, Lon Tarra, Tordio, Loa, the Ninganga, last of Tordro, Chiba, Tread on Chiba. So the patterns always coin uh, certain truths into nice sayings, and one is to say words. <coughs> Um, words lack weapons, but they cut up the lungs and hearts. Although there are no knives and um, uh, attached to words, words are just sound, empty sound. But the result, their cause, can be equivalent or even worse than somebody cutting up our lungs and hearts. <laughs> ตาเตนดาเวเกเตนมอกเกเจเปเกดาเตนีเตนีนาวาลาทูปาตงนอมเตดาเตกิโมลาตอชินจีนะดาเตเตนตามบาลามาจุปาเดเตนีดาเตเ
ตาตาหน้าร้องตรงนั้นตรงนั้นตัวบ่เทียนจงกินจ้ะล่ะเซมเลยเซมกันงูเตียล่ะจิตเตนะตันทุ่งจุตันโยมาเลยตะนี่เ
Now, even in the hell realms, we can see that uh, the beings suffer from the various projections, the hallucin hallucinations that torment them by perceiving the very ground they stand on as being burning iron, burning red hot iron. And whatever is water at this, in this world is just um, red hot uh, lava and the, 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 the rest of the appearances of that world are vicious creatures that cut up and pierce and torture oneself. As long as one has all these <coughs> evil imprints in one's mind of one's own ill-wishing activity that is stored in one's mind, those projections of hallucinations don't seem to end. And so clearly it seems that this is the, the work of mind that conjures up all this um, horror scenario. <coughs> Now, then we have on the other side all the appearances, the pure appearance of the Buddha's fears. They are of that type where the very ground of earth happens to be seen as the brilliance of, of, of jewels and precious stones and very comfortable, very soft to touch. They actually go down a little bit when you press them and they come, the earth comes up a little bit when you, when you lift your foot. They're, they're of this rubber-like elastic nature, although it's very brilliant like the, the most precious stones. And there are those trees, the marvelous trees everywhere that are ornamented in, at their leaves with the uh, symbols of auspiciousness, like the eight um, symbols of auspiciousness that we know and other ones. And the tones, the sweet tones of birds are carrying the message of Dharma words to our ears. In fact, those birds seem to be the emanations of bodhisattvas. This perfect, per, um, this perfection and excellence of the, the Buddha's fierce appearance is but the projection of our own mind, of a mind that has stored wholesome impressions, wholesome activity from the past and the results in this vision or reflection outside as the pure Buddha sphere. The pure Buddha sphere does not exist anywhere else outside. It is the clear projection that the mind has made up. <coughs> Tere now, talking about the perfect one, the excellent one, the Buddha, 
The Buddha is marked by 64 specific characteristics. They fall into two groups. There are 32 marks of liberation, which are distinct to the Buddha, that no one can will supersede his insight and so on. There are 62, uh, 32 marks of that liberation, and there are 32 marks that, are re that relate to the benefit that he has performed along the path for all sentient beings. They are the result of his accumulating merit and wisdom, and this positive relation of being so helpful to other sentient beings has kind of condensated in the 32 marks of maturity. 32 marks of maturity of the Buddha, and altogether there are 64. And with the Buddha, those 64 qualities are visible, they're evident, manifest. However, the 62 are also present in our own mind, in anyone's mind. There's no difference to whether one is old or young, small or big, man or woman, or sick or unhealthy or whatever. There's no difference in any kind that everybody's mind carries basically those 64 qualities. Now, where are those 64 qualities in our own mind? They're right now, at this point, obscured by the various instantaneous stains and veils of our cognition, the disturbing emotions and other wrong views, and so the um, veil, the very presence of the 64 qualities of the enlightened one. If we uh, were to um, s s apply the proper methods of body, speech and mind and train ourselves, experience will result, <coughs> realization, and then the various veils and layers of ignorance will be removed. And what has been there from the very beginning, the 64 qualities that already were in ourselves, then finally will actualize, they will manifest. Now, this funny thing had happened now when we uh, draw the conclusion that on one side it seems that the mind is not to be found, it's just empty since we couldn't perceive it. When we were looking for it, there was nothing to perceive of what we could call mind. Still, letting it act on, on its own accord, then it will produce the tremendous clarity and precision of appearance of this world or the appearance of, some, of nirvana, of the Buddha's fears, the qualities of the excellent ones, will manifest. So it seems to be the, the, the breeding ground for so, as well samsara as nirvana. Both comes from the mind in all the clarity and precision. Yet it is empty. 
And those two are not different things. It's not one corner is empty and the other corner producing this clarity. In the very moment where it is empty, when you don't you look for it, you don't notice it. Then it is also clear. And whatever a clarity is manifesting, then at any time when you look for it, it will not be perceivable. It is empty. It is empty and clear at any time, anywhere. And this unity or indifferentiability of clear, clear mind and empty nature is something that applies not only for to ourselves or some people, it applies to all sentient beings. All beings' mind is clear yet empty. Sentinel,我们的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的，Sentinel的
Pancho, semi naso rona, tu jambo semi naso kibate, rona yo mares, semi chukumun yidu don, se semi nilu matu, pa chukumun ajane, then you get over don. To rest like this means nowhere else is than the great supreme noble one, whose name here is the, the very mind that has a break and relaxes. So this very mind being Dhammakaya is the state in which the six syllables ought to be repeated. 